Hello everybody! Today is April 2nd. This weekend is uh, Easter weekend, if you are prepared for that kind of thing, or I don't know, some of you guys may probably celebrate that. Is that okay. why the traffic is so crazy today? Is it? I don't know, but Why it would is. it be crazy a week before? Oh, it's next. Oh, okay. Yeah, next yeah. friend. Yeah, we're doing a robot and nonsense today. Happy Easter, though, for those of you who celebrate that. Not a lot of crossovers between Easter and robots. No, not many. Well, let's talk about some... Uh... Wait a minute. This is not a robot article at all. Why did I put this here? Here's an article that doesn't have anything to do with the yeah, topic I, today. I was you're trying to remember. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, there's nothing. Court sentenced men for pirating thousands of movies and TV shows, including via Plex. I think I meant to put this in security because they raided these guys. One of the people uh, uh, had shared his Plex password with 21 friends. Is that really what we've come down to? Hey, this is. Uh, Imagine having 21 friends, chat. Uh, the reason that I added this one is because they, they went really far here, and not only. Like, these guys were seeding a little bit, but not on the level that you would expect. They're going after just downloaders now. Yeah. And handing them some pretty big fines. It uh, it read to me like the disturbing thing, where it's like, you have shown up on our radar, and we're going to find any little thing that you're doing that's illegal and really just trump it up. Because mm -hmm. 21, sharing your Plex server with 21 friends doesn't seem to me to be the kind of transgression that would warrant spending this kind of time and resource pursuing. I imagine that the HBO Max team did the math there and they figured out that was costing them like $20,000 a day. Yeah, yeah. Those 21 people should be spending at least $5,000 a month each on that content. So, watch out. That was in Europe. Is it Denmark? Denmark yeah, I Denmark. Yeah. Which is weird because... In the past, they've been some of the most tolerant yeah. for that kind of thing. What line did they cross? It's not clear. Probably just a new regime in power. Now moving on to actual robot news. As we move into April, there is some robot excitement because a first ever will be happening in the robot world. NASA to fly the Ingenuity Mars helicopter in early April. Despite having a much lower atmospheric pressure than here on Earth, it's a helicopter for the Martian atmosphere. It ain't much of one. The picture shows the ejected protective cover on the bottom of the rover because it's got to, you know, undock from the rover or whatever. Yeah. It dropped the little plastic or the little housing thing. It had a little baby. It has littered on Mars. I wonder what the fine for that is. <laughs> well, it was littering on Mars before it ever landed. <laughs> Just leave your junk up there. That's what we leave do. Leave no trace. You think... Uh, if we ever recover all this stuff, what will it be worth? It'll, it'll, it belongs in a museum. Yeah, but let's assume that the governments aren't the first to get there. <laughs> Tens of millions of dollars, probably. <laughs> of course, then you have to ship it back. I don't know. People are paying you know, $2.9 million for these NFTs. What if NASA sells the NFT for the you know, right of first refusal on whenever we get to Mars? I mean, that'd be a great way for NASA to raise money. I guess I, I'm sitting here thinking is anybody going to be that much of a sucker but then I immediately realized yeah. that they will think about all the NFT the fart NFTs I mean come on yeah we just did a story about them. well I don't know if you and I will ever see humans on Mars but maybe we can experience that just by having our brains rewired researchers found a way to send a tiny robots into mouse brains uh, it sounds a little more elaborate than it is, but the robots crossed the blood-brain barrier because the robots were uh, subjected to an external magnetic field. Well, they were first encapsulated in E. coli, which made the white blood cells attack them, which then crossed the blood-brain, at which point they could use the magnetic field. And uh, any of you that ever had a Nokia phone... Would have been very successful <laughs> at this job because it's literally a magnetic game of snake. Yeah. There it is. Neat, huh? And they can move them around. They move real slow, but still, they can be used to deliver things to the brain. Exciting huh. times. Just, you know, just gloss over the E. coli thing. That's fine. <laughs> well, yeah. 
<laughs> they might have to fix that. <laughs> it probably won't lead to a brain tumor. I don't know if it's enough E. coli to, yeah. to harm you. But that was maybe the other they'll thing. find another pathogen that performs the same function that's maybe less uh, horrible. But wasn't that the other thing with this article is that this is to kind of con- combat certain kinds of brain tumors? I'm sure that's what they're working yeah. to deliver drugs directly to yeah. a location in the brain. Yeah. Well, if you're wondering why Wendell has littered our desk with shill stuff, <laughs> I was wondering the same thing. Maybe this is what motivated him. YouTube is testing automatic product placement detection in videos. Video Giant looks like it's getting another recommendation algorithm. My favorite product placement in the history of all media is Taco Bell and Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Not in Demolition Man? Oh, that's a close second. What about Starbucks and Game of Thrones? That was not intentional. <laughs> Still I always thought that was funny. <laughs> in The Walking Dead when they would have like that year's latest car, but the apocalypse happened like years ago. <laughs> The factory was automated, Krista. <laughs> I just kept producing and designing new cars. Don't worry about it. Now, the detractors from this, uh, they see it in a different light, and I can't help but agree to them. They assume that YouTube is getting into the world of affiliate links yes. and automating them. That's coming. Which sucks because YouTube creators, that's one of the ways that they try to get a little bit of blood from that stone. <laughs> And YouTube's like, not anymore. Yeah, the affiliate link is much, much better than the crumbs that the algorithm provides. So, uh... But we do love those crumbs, YouTube. Please don't take them away. (laughs) Store.level1text.com We should be getting some new stuff in the store soon. Very soon. New spring, new stuff in the store. Oh, yeah. spring line. I am almost done with the current batch of KVMs. Uh, They've... I think probably by April 10th or 11th, they're shipping in the order that they were received, and I should be done by April 10th or 11th. There was a slight delay with uh, some of them. I'm going to be cutting it close with some of the single monitor versions. I don't know. I'll reach out if we've got problems or a little bit of a delay there, but we'll see. We'll tweet when they're back in stock as well. We've gotten several requests on Twitter, like, when are they coming back? It's like, soon, TM. Yeah, soon. it's got... We're going to be good on dual monitor KVMs, but the single ones, we had a little bit of a supply chain issue. They're not coming through the canal. They're coming across no, they're Pacific, not. so you got that going for it. <laughs> Do you think it'll still be stuck by the time they watch this? Yeah. It'll be a whole uh, week. Some people have said it could take up to four weeks. That seems crazy. That does seem crazy. With the amount crazy. of land moving and terraforming we can do that we've seen, how are we not able to do this? Are we that worried are, about just getting a bunch of tugboats and just push it out of the way? They've got So they've got tugboats pulling one end and then excavators digging the other end. But I think... It's so heavy, and so much of it is grounded at this point, they can't move it. Huh. I wonder if there's, like, a concern about, like, you know, could we cause a collapse of something else, maybe, if they dig it out too fast? I don't know. Well, we could tear the ship apart, and then it would just be a canal full of containers. (laughs) That would be (laughs) bad. simple, yeah. That would be bad, yeah. This article, uh, to get the headline that I was copy pasting from when i organize these stories it's just a tiny tiny little nugget i don't even know if you noticed it but the point here is not the new number which is lower but what is being replaced by which is robots (laughs) defense review british army to be cut to seventy two thousand five hundred troops by 2025 the article points out that their their troop they're supposed to be like eighty two thousand strong but they're like seventy six thousand strong because for the last decade but their target is going to go from 85,000 to 72,000 and there's going to be more technology drones robots whatever most of them probably made by China for when we go to war with China because that's obviously going to work (laughs) oh the EMP shield on this is so good no there's a uh, there's a lot of old jokes and I imagine this has happened several times where the drunk father is driving drunk but when the police lights come on he swaps the seat with his young son because yeah. it's better to have the young son driving than the drunk father driving that's kind of the 21st century way <laughs> of doing this now two teens alone in a tesla no one in the driver's seat when it backed into a patrol car deputies say it uh did about 300 dollars of damage to the tesla the patrol car was unharmed the deputies were just like ah, we're gonna give him a ticket but glad nobody was hurt so they were driving or so say the deputies 
uh, these two kids were joyriding in the Tesla. They took it without their parents' permission and lied about where they were going and actually crossed a state line. But when oh. they saw the police lighting them up, they were like, just turn on the autopilot and get in the back. <laughs> and, and the autopilot pulled over. Didn't work. But then it backed into the police car. Yeah. So it was like one for autopilot <laughs> and then take one away for autopilot. <laughs> You know, I'll pull over for the cops, but also screw the cops. <laughs> It'd be funny if it would just took off. <laughs> You're not taking us alive, pig. <laughs> Out of that speaker that are, they, are the speakers in, installed yet? The mandatory. Yes. Yes. Have you ever heard one? Yeah, you can program it. Like you go into the dashboard, you can set it to be whatever you want. NWA. If, if you would like your car to make f- fart noises for its running noise, you can totally do that. Well. I think we've talked about something very similar to this before, and I made the same comment. Uh, apparently, I'm the only person who's ever seen Highlander 2. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Dimming the sun, $100 million geoengineering research program proposed. All options to fight climate crisis must be explored, says National Academy. Now, they're not actually talking about dimming the sun. That would be crazy. What they're instead proposing is putting a bunch of dust into the atmosphere, which will have the effect of dimming the sun without actually affecting the nuclear furnace that is our sun. But it would affect the humans who breathe on Earth. (laughs) I think the only reason they're not talking about actually dimming the sun is because there is no way to actually dim the sun. (laughs) If they thought they could get away with it, they might do it. (laughs) Uh, you know, listen here, the sun is only 99% of the mass in our solar system. We can definitely affect it with uh, our puny conventional weapons. Also, strikingly similar to the Mr. Burns plot from The Simpsons when he was shot. <laughs> he wanted to blot out the sun, so they used more nuclear power. <laughs> Just can't be a good idea. Well, the startup game is uh, more perception than reality, wouldn't you say? Yes. It's all about getting people to be interested in your thing and to give you that sweet, sweet venture capital. And how do you do it? Well, sometimes you do it just by hiring the right people. But I can't imagine he brings anything to this table. Can you? No. I mean, come on. He brings his fame to the table, and that's what matters. <laughs> Prince Harry joined Silicon Valley startup. What What would be funny is if, like, you know, he was actually a stealth, like, you know, tech guru this entire time, and because of the royal families, why he had to keep it on the, on the down low. But his job... I've never even heard of this job before. It was like chief impact officer. Yeah, what does that mean? Is he jackhammering all day? What's well, an impact <laughs> officer? I think it means about the impact on society as a whole. Oh. Obviously. And he's particularly suited to understand that because he's lived here all his life? Oh, wait. <laughs> he has nothing in common with the average man. This is oh. a startup that's about uh, like mental health. Well, Coaching. I guess he did He did do some charity work, I guess, when he was part of the royal family. So I guess that would kind of qualify. But, like, is being an intern or something like that really, like, the kind of experience you would need for this? Well, he, he mentioned his uh, military time. That's what he always goes back to. He said that, you know, military is such a, a stressful mental environment that he understands how to cope with that. Because, you reading, know... Reading the letter right now, I'm just like, I uh, you know how they put him right in the combat zone with everybody else and didn't give him special treatment when he was in yeah. the Royal Marines? Wow. That wasn't how that went at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he says he has four key areas. Driving advocacy and awareness. Guiding BetterUp's social mission and impact. Influencing the vision of BetterUp's platform. And expanding BetterUp's global community. Those so he is just there as like a... A billboard. The combinations of words that you just use there mean nothing. Yeah. Best case scenario, this startup is is uh, using a royal as like a marketing thing. Oh, Worst case absolutely. scenario, yeah. they've duped a royal into participating in their scam. But I tell you what they did brilliantly is right now, his name is hot because mm-hmm. of the whole Markle racism angle. Mm. And this could be a big tie into that. He understands it. Sure, he's lived a life of privilege. If if white privilege is a thing, is there anywhere in the world it's more concentrated than the Windsor Palace? Yeah. So. Would that be like, you know, it's like a coming of age story, but it's like it dawns on you that you are, you've lived the pinnacle <laughs> of a privileged life and this is your way of atoning for that? But wouldn't you then have to give up all the perks from that life? Which would mean resigning from this job. <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't care. I'm not going to use that service, no matter how good it is. <clears throat> Ultrasound is an amazing technology. Now, generally, we will use that for locating parasites in the human body. But this is a brilliant new way to use them. However, there is a giant catch that they mentioned very late in the article. <laughs> Ultrasound reads monkey brains, opening the new way to control machines with thought. It's going to require some surgery. Little bit, just a tiny piece of your skull needs to be removed. That's <laughs> not a big deal. Worth it. It's a small just skull a piece. <laughs> you didn't need that anyway. And if you've ever been in a bicycle accident that was particularly severe, you probably don't even have that piece of your brain anyway. <laughs> but I, I guess that is if you have to have invasive brain stuff for whatever reason, that's good news for you. I don't want to put Elon Musk in charge of this technology. Don't 100% trust him to not leave something in there. I wouldn't let him feed my cats. <laughs> we are bearing down on the big deadline for all the UFO releases. And that's exciting. But in the meantime, they're <laughs> trickling out some breadcrumbs just to, just to keep us hyped. UFO report details, quote unquote, difficult to explain sightings, says U.S. ex-intelligence director. The U.S. military pilots and uh, satellites have recorded, quote unquote, a lot more UFO sightings that have been uh, then have been made public, John Ratcliffe says. I don't know if it was him or one of the other people, but there's a quote in this article that says, you know, it's like you look at some of this stuff and you think, oh, the enemy or, you know, other countries are just a little bit farther ahead of where we think they are in terms of technology. And then there are other events that happen that just you have zero explanation for. Uh, a move from subsonic to sonic speeds with no sonic boom was one of the big ones. Um, some other like almost teleportation like stuff that they were witnessing and no explanation. <laughs> I want to believe rocket like movement with no uh, particulate yeah, no, emission, no propulsion. It's going to be exciting. Although I don't think we'll ever get any real details. Do you No. I mean, you know, space time theoretically is kind of springy. So if you can like everything revolves around dynamically being able to play with mass, which the only way that we definitely know of involves insane amounts of energy that would be impossible for us to control that if the tiniest little thing went wrong, Earth wouldn't be here anymore. I know some places you can go and you can dynamically play with mass for $20. <laughs> and one man who might be going to one of those places, probably not. <laughs> In the not too distant future. I'm not sure if he cares anymore, but I, if, if anybody would, I would say it was him because <laughs> he does seem to be cheating the Reaper year after year after year. Now, I assume you read the details of this. I did. How likely would you be to do it? I'm not interested in this at all. At all? At all. What if I lowered the price to 250 <sighs> No. Uh. Maybe like 100 bucks. Wow. I don't know if I believe that. I think you'd go $250. I, uh, William Shatner to celebrate his 90th birthday with two-day Star Trek event. So I actually know somebody, or I know of somebody, that paid the $1,500 for the full experience. Wow. And, uh, of, of this or a previous one? Of this, this upcoming thing. They oh, got okay. their ticket locked in and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I get it. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are willing to, to pay that. And it makes sense. The problem is that when Shatner is in real person mode, he just doesn't care. And so, But this is probably the last one. You think he'll like put some effort into it? I think you know everyone has been sort of progressively more into like, the don't care. Because... You know, I was at Dragon Con with Shatner a really long time ago, and he was super in I don't care mode. And it, was not, it wasn't it was off-putting, but it was like, you know, the enthusiasm that he has for certain things. It's like, oh, I realize now that's just acting. He's not actually enthusiastic about no. those things. No, he doesn't care about yeah. Star Trek at all. Or so, not, not even Star Trek, just like the ideals of Star Trek. Like, right, yeah, can we, you no, know, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. So what you get here is you get, uh, there's some place where they've recreated the, the bridge. You're going to go there. You stay there for two days. You get a bridge experience with him. And then he gives a speech on the bridge, and you get to be part of that. You get dinner with him. I, is that both days? Mm -hmm. And you get a uh, an autograph and a picture. $1,500. And that's not including lodging. Yeah. Right? You, yeah. you probably have to feed yourself for most of the meals those days. Yeah. I mean, if I were dying, I'd probably do it. But We're all that, dying, right? bro. <laughs> There's so a little bit more immediacy. Yeah, well, you want to talk about immediacy? He's dying. 
You're never going to get this chance again. What about uh, Patrick Stewart? Mm, I might be more likely to do it with you know him or I, uh, Ian McKellen. Uh, or possibly even uh, like James Doohan. I, I think they're... I think I think James Doohan is probably the most, you know, normal person. Or uh, um, James Doohan, you get for five hundred all day. <laughs> he died, but I mean, when he was alive. Um, what about uh, Sulu, uh, George Takei? Also, would be very cheap, comparatively cheap. But I, also, I think he would be a way better conversation. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like I think that. Yeah, George Takei would handle that so much better and, and be a much more genuine person, I think. Yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> Shudder is, is gonna he's going to leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths <laughs> at the end of his life because yes. that's just who he is. But that's part of his charm, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Good luck pronouncing the name of this school. But uh, you know, I threw this one in there just to stir it up. <laughs> School is sorry for making boys a standard apology for quote unquote behaviors of their gender. So the school thought that it would be a good activity to show all of the wrong things that men have done in history and then ask the the uh, male students to stand and uh, say that they're, you know, or I guess the act of standing was the apology for their behavior. What could possibly go wrong? It's bizarre. Yeah, that whole sins of the father thing. I think we've established that you shouldn't do that, especially to kids. But here we are. It's not even their father. It's all the fathers. Well, I guess the assembly, like, they were trying to drive home, like, you know, if if you see one of your female classmates being harassed, like, you should speak up. But I feel like this kind of, like, it makes it like, oh, I remember that experience of having to stand, and now I feel really uncomfortable, and now I don't want to stand up for my Yeah, classmate. yeah. I'm like, just... why would you make that so uncomfortable or even worse it's like oh god i'm not even going to talk to women because oh, what's going to happen here we well, you know what we're building krista we're building a, a new generation of cheese counter uh, <laughs> encounters cheese counter encounter doesn't work cheese countering <laughs> i had a terrible cheese counter today <laughs> This is another one of those headlines where I put it in and after reading the story, I was like, I probably should just delete that. But I I left it in and I like to think about if this guy does get elected, imagine the angry phone calls (laughs) because people aren't going to understand his message at all. Tamil Nadu election candidate promises a helicopter trip to the moon, uh, one crower, and uh, there's a catch. So in addition to that, he also promised a robot for housework. That was the one that caught my attention. There were several other things they didn't even mention here. It's just yeah. insane, all the things that he says you can have. Just elect me and I'll make all this happen. And it's like, you sound like a politician. Yeah, and the catch is, it's all just to raise awareness about how common it is for Indian politicians to offer free stuff to get votes. He's not actually offering any of this, if you read between the lines. Or past the first paragraph. Yeah. Nice. But I think most people aren't going to read past the first paragraph. And they're gonna, gonna be like, be no, some... he's totally gonna that's how he gets elected. Yeah. Where's my helicopter? How hilarious well, how tragically hilarious would it be if we just started handing out helicopters to everybody? <laughs> it would probably have the population, don't you think? I think I'd probably t- just try well, I guess you can't really sell it because if everyone has one, there's exactly. not gonna be any market for there'd it. There'd be no value. What the hell would I do with it? It's in, it's in your yard, Krista, and you're just sitting there looking at it like, I bet I could do it. <laughs> But I could. I just turn it into a giant planter. A greenhouse. I turn it into a greenhouse. Instead of a national vaccination plan, it's a nas- national helicopter pilot's license program. <laughs> <laughs> 200 million licensed helicopter pilots in 200 days. This is just a beautiful, beautiful headline because I, I, did he think about this for even a millisecond? <laughs> nope. Even a... Uh, femtosecond. What's the <laughs> smallest one now? <laughs> Femtosecond's pretty small. I think we found one that's smaller. He didn't even spend that amount of time thinking about this statement. <laughs> Democratic senator says the government can combat gun violence the same way that they tackled the opioid crisis. He doesn't realize we still have an opioid crisis because yeah, he's been given tackled. so much money. Or that it's worse than it's ever been. <laughs> it's only getting worse. But the real reason, perhaps the real meaning behind this is that it's literal. They are going to combat it the same way, by destroying lives with it. 
This man oh. needs to call up any of my relatives so <laughs> he can hear the long list of, well, so-and-so's back on drugs. <laughs> yeah, back on drugs. Uh, the yeah. Biden administration urges the Supreme Court to let cops enter homes and seize guns without a warrant. So this was an old married couple, and they were fighting. And uh, the husband went and got an unloaded pistol and put it on the table and told his wife, he's like, you know, go ahead, do it. Put me out of my misery. It was not loaded. Um but at some point, the police got called because, you know, old married couples, as they do, they were still fighting. And uh, they, I guess the police decided that he, ha- he had to go to the hospital to be checked out for psychiatric care. He volunteered because they promised they wouldn't touch his guns. So then they went back to the house and told his wife that he said it was okay for them to take the guns. That was a lie. And they took the guns. And so it was like just lies, a lot of lies. The whole, and then... You know, so this is going to be a Supreme Court case, and Biden, his his whole team is pressuring, say yes, this is fine. We should be able to do this. I don't think this is fine because this will be used as a wedge to do more egregious things than this. Like uh, this particular instance is not insanely egregious, but it will only snowball from here. So we must not allow this. But we already saw back during the election a lot of people crying out and saying that you voting a certain way should be a mental health red flag to take your guns yeah that's why i say it's going to snowball from here oh, any one of a number of ways we there is quite a bit of snow already <laughs> this is even being considered yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems that way and if you're one of those people who's like you don't need guns well sir <laughs> What would you do in this situation? Because let me tell you, you will take my cats from my cold, dead hands. <laughs> <laughs> Upper Peninsula man uh, awakes to intruder holding gun to head, demanding his cats. He only took one cat. And the great failure, although M Live did mention it, but they didn't figure out what happened to the cat. They caught the guy, but nobody knows where the cat is. Aww. He might have made it home. Maybe he didn't. Nobody's reporting it. And what about the other cat? That cat has to spend its whole life like, why didn't I get picked? What's wrong with me? The cat me? goes looks in the mirror and he's like, why wasn't it me? If only air travel were permitted, we would use the Patreon money and make this a level one expose. We would just fly there and figure it out. Oh, the New yeah, York I'd Post. be down to go spend some time in the UP. This is a terrible website. This one is great because we now have more visibility into our leaders than ever before the cameras are always running and <laughs> or insanely the, high resolution the internet sleuths are always running <laughs> and always looking for something to latch onto. this one is pretty damning i mean the level of uh training wheels i guess you would call this for a press conference is uh i don't know if it's unprecedented but we've never seen it before new photos show cheat sheets used by biden during his first press conference I didn't really see this as a super big deal, but then again, I get, you know. Oh my God, this it, website. In this kind of a scenario, I would have been, I would have needed something like this personally. But then I don't think that I'm presidential material, so. Yeah, so, I have I, to like repeat lines over and over when we do videos, so. <laughs> as you can see here, that is a picture of the reporter so that he knows who to pick on in what order. And their name, and I don't know if you can read the text, but I'm pretty sure the text has a little bit of information about what that question is going to cover. Because it's all scripted. Dun, 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 dun. And oh boy, did they throw some softballs. <laughs> and the well, this hard. Was, this is just the first press conference. It's fine. No, it's not fine. And the hardballs, like the one about when do we get to go into the migrant facilities? It's just like, I don't know. What's going on in Syria? I Shh. couldn't tell you. Shh. Why are you asking me that? Shh. 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 Was, <laughs> was it was 2018 or 2019 when Harambe, when we lost Harambe? Oh, it's, oh I that think was, it was 2016. That. Oh, wow. Yeah. God, it's I'm been pretty a sure. a long time. I don't know. I think maybe we've had enough time to heal. No. But we almost lost another one. Father arrested after taking two-year-old inside elephant enclosure at San Diego Zoo. Listen, those elephants, they are tired of your crap. They will, they want none of it. Well, they're in prison. <laughs> they got nothing to do all day. Here it is. 
Uh, there is a video of the guy, because obviously everybody has a phone these days, and they do say that one of the bull elephants immediately charged. Ooh. But luckily no one was hurt. And uh, How ballsy do you have to be? It's like, you know what? My two-year-old needs to go pet an elephant today. <laughs> no elephants were hurt. One thing about the elephants, they're not going to forget this. <laughs> It's precisely that a prior incident was not forgotten is why they charged. <laughs> <laughs> now, I did not see this posted in any of the major news places. Did you? No. The, no. I, I just saw actually one of our Twitch lurkers posted the <laughs> GIF. And I was like, that can't be real. So I Googled it in the Google News. And yeah, so news.com.au. I don't know if this is a, a well-known uh, website for news. I imagine it is. But uh, yeah. That ship that is stuck in the canal had a, oh, let's do the headline first, had a very uh, interesting, in that little bay or whatever it is, it moved around a lot before it got wedged in the canal, which makes me wonder, like, was this all planned? <laughs> is this an intelligence operation by some foreign company or foreign country? And if it is, why would you do that in the beginning? Just that doesn't, Nothing about this makes sense. Cargo ship draws a giant penis in the Red Sea and becomes wedged in the Suez Canal. So it's like, wait, wait, what? And it's like, yeah, this is a plot of the GPS coordinates of that ship. (laughs) And it's, I think that's got to be on purpose, don't you? Uh, Seems like. There's not enough, it doesn't look like anyway, there's not enough other boats in the area to like warrant making that pattern. No, no. And if you, the the animation actually shows the uh, direction of the ship as well, I think. And like how they drifted in certain ways. It really, really, really looks like it was on purpose. Yeah. But this raises another very important question. If your navigational and seamanship skills are so good that you can do this, how do you get wedged in a canal? <laughs> That's going to be exhibit A in the trial. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing about this makes sense. And one excavator? <laughs> Come on. What are we doing, folks? This one is fantastic. Now, uh... I don't really, they say idol. They're talking about like a K-pop, I mean, it's Japan, but they're talking about that, that type of thing, J-pop. right? I think so. Yeah. Like uh, the like pop your stars. Like pop artist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, oh crap, I accidentally went to the. Uh, Japanese company is offering paid leave for their employees grieving over their favorite idol's retirement. So, if she, I guess they cycle them in and out. Because you have to have constant young girls, right? So if she falls off or gets married, that's 10 days. Now, if she's only your second favorite girl, you think you have to register ahead of time? Probably. You have to give them like your list of favorite pop. If she's your second favorite girl, you can get three to five days if she gets married, I think. And they said you could negotiate. If your mental suffering was so high because of this, you could actually get more than 10 if you talk to them about it. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., it's like, please let me off one day. I'm very sick with the Rona. <laughs> Meanwhile, here in the U.S., it is, you had better meet your package quota. Otherwise, we're going to fire you because there's 10 <laughs> people that want your job. People are peeing in bottles. We're peeing in bottles yeah. and they're buying bottles of pee. <laughs> uh. And finally... You know, we love to end on an animal story. And this, uh, you know, we're getting into spring. Krista, what's the, how about camping this year? Have you planned your first camp? Um, maybe in a couple weeks. You should camp uh, in your backyard first. What I about, know. Hey, stop the whining room. What She's about sitting over here yawning. Yeah, that's going to work. Why don't you count to three? What about if you were to take Rue? I remember you took Rue to a lake one time. You think yeah. about any of those? Yeah. Just yeah, a, she a loves local, that. A local lake that the local rivers empty into? She would love that. Read the headline. What is she doing? Hi. Headline. Sorry. Get rude to read the headline. Highway accident leads to over a dozen bull sharks being dumped in... How do you pronounce this? Which... Is it Wichita? Wakita? Wakita River. Wakita? Wow. A dozen bull sharks. These sharks are being transported on a truck which had an accident 
And they did manage to fish the truck out of the river, but when they got it out, guess what was no longer in the truck? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't think those sharks are going to survive in the Arkansas climate, but I could be wrong. I don't know. They seem to be worried that they would be a threat, so maybe they can survive there. And one of them, whose name, of course, is Jaws, is uh, over 12 feet long, or 15 feet long, and unusually aggressive (laughs) for a bull shark. Well, if there are any serial killers living in the Hot Springs, Arkansas area, <laughs> <laughs> it's your lucky day. What you want to do now, a, a novice serial killer would just throw the bodies in there and hope a pro serial killer chums for a week or two before <laughs> to get them on a timing path. I don't know. Is that, is that one of our best pro criminal tips uh, yet? I don't Maybe. know. It's, it's yeah. niche, but it's good. <laughs> if you need it, you're really happy to have that tip. So just go down to the butcher and be like, you got any uh, like viscera or entrails and stuff you get rid of? Let me buy that in bulk. Take, head down to the river it's and like, pop what, it in. Why there. do you need this? I'm going catfishing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember if, it, if I'm thinking of tiger sharks or bull sharks, but there's one that can survive in fresh water. Well. I might be thinking of tiger sharks. I, they didn't mention that, but they you would think that these uh, wildlife guys would immediately know if they were no threat because they're going to be dead in a couple of days. Yeah. But yeah, I guess uh, they can't survive in, in fresh water. It's not great. Not great for the citizens of that area. If yeah, they I want to go swimming. Uh, I wouldn't want to do one of those river runs, you know, where you just get your cooler in one inner tube and you're in the other one. Yeah. And you see that dorsal fin <laughs> come up out of the water. <laughs> Normally I just have to worry about snakes, but now it's sharks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I saw. Uh, I don't know if this was a recent video. This is it was horrific. This is a horrific thing to end the news on, but I'm going to do it anyway. There was a. Uh, they had a crocodile, a massive, massive crocodile, and you know that scene in Jaws where he's like, "If you cut that shark open and the young boy falls out on the deck, you know, like that thing." It was yeah. that scene, but when they cut it open, a whole like nine year old unmarked child was in there. It didn't oh, even no. chew it. <laughs> a whole child intact head first in the crocodile where where was this i'm not sure it was uh you know it's in florida we should just really just cut it off (laughs) no it wasn't the u.s Uh, it was uh probably like the where do crocs live are they in the amazon i think they're in the amazon right i think there are yeah i think it was the amazon anyway that's something you guys can all think about this easter weekend or you can watch it if you want i'm sure it's easy to google Oh, don't don't do that. Don't give in to the the call of the void on the internet. Anyway, well, Krista, you gonna give us a bull shark goodbye? Uh, sharks don't really make any noises, so it's just like <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>